Hello, this is Lady Boule, and I hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for your thumbs up, for your comments, and thank you for sharing the videos. Thank you for all you do to support the channel. And yes, we are commanded to love one another, whether we want to or not, or whether we agree with each other or not. And if you watched my last video, I said I was going to put a link to another video in the description box and I didn't do it. But I have put that link in the comment section of that video if you would like to go back and watch it. And here it is on the screen as well. And today I'm kind of piggybacking off that video and talking about famous black people and their personal lives. And I think a lot of famous black people know that they should not speak about their personal lives to people who are trying to gain a reputation for themselves by interviewing them. Because in black America, and I'm sad to say it, there's a lot of toxicity. When it comes to relationships between men and women, we don't have the best record. There's a lot of finger pointing and a lot of critiquing of each other. And there's this feeling that if I can't get along with black men or I can't get along with black women, then nobody can get along with black men or black women. People will impose their insecurities on other people. And when you say somebody else can't break up a marriage, you may not be able to break it up. But you can damn sure undermine another person's relationship. That is why each couple should protect their relationship. The knives are out there. And sometimes people are not even being vicious. They don't have anything else to talk about. And if you go with these black people, especially these black men calling themselves dating coaches and having these podcasts, most of these people do not have a wide range of knowledge. If they're athletes, once they get outside of the athletic realm, then they try to go into relationships, talking to people about their personal relationships. And that is where you're going to get in trouble. Shannon Sharp had this preference, Brittany Renner, on his podcast. And she was really talking about how many men she had been with. She was talking about her life. But what did he try to do? He tried to drag black women into it. For those of you who may not know, Brittany Renner is biracial. She was brought up in Mississippi. She went to Jackson State for some period of time. Jackson State is an HBCU. So Shannon Sharp was trying to get her to say that the black girls at Jackson State were jealous of her. Now, where would that come from? Where would that come from? See, that wasn't even about black women. It wasn't even about Brittany Renner. That was about something to do with him and apparently some kind of animosity he has towards black women because he really should have been supportive of the black women at Jackson State. But he was trying to make her say that they were jealous of her. Fortunately, she was smart enough to see what he was trying to do and she talked around it. She did not let him drag her into a situation where she was going to say something disparaging about black women who had done nothing to her and who had shown her a great deal of grace based on how she responded. Now what I mean by black people imposing their insecurities on other people, Shannon Sharp had been on a podcast or on some kind of TV show with a white man named Skip Bayless who was totally disrespectful of him and even got him fired or made it so hard for him to stay there that he left. I don't know what the situation was, but I, I heard a couple because other well, black men were talking about how disrespectful the white man was to Shannon Sharp. I tuned in for a couple of episodes, but they were right. The white man was very disrespectful, 
But instead of him turning his animosity on the white man, it appears that, you know, he's turning it on black women. Got something to say about black women. As opposed to you go after the person that's going after you. And I do hate to say this, but there are black people, there are black men who hate to see other black men happy with black women. And there are black women who hate to see other black women happy with black men. Your experience is not everybody's experience. So black people do have to be careful. Now why am I saying black people? Well, look at this. They say, the white media says, that Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift are in a relationship. It all looks manufactured to me. She had been dating some guy named Matt Healy, some say since 2014. That's who she had been with. He went on a talk show and said something so offensive and disturbing about black women that her handlers basically said this guy has got to go. He has got to go because her fans began turning on her after he said what he said. So all of a sudden that relationship was over and they're propping this relationship up with Travis Kelsey. They look like two people who like each other, like brother and sister. But white people are riding on this relationship. They are bigging up this relationship. They want this relationship. This is a good look for white America. So they are not trashing this relationship. I'm saying it looks manufactured, but I don't know that to be true. There could be genuine affection there. But whether it is or not, the white media is playing it up. Every chance anybody gets to mention Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey, they do it because this is a good look for white America. Jonathan Owens and Simone Biles is a good look for black America. Their relationship may work and it may not work, but it's a good look for black America. These are two young people, two successful young people. And the first thing we hear is, well, she's more successful. She has more money than he does. Well, Taylor Swift is more successful, better internationally known, and has more money than Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey also dated black women before he got with Taylor Swift. But they are not holding that against him. They are still supporting that relationship and want it to be something. And they're not even married. And the reason we don't know what Travis Kelsey and, and Taylor Swift are saying about each other because they're not going on social media to be grilled about their relationship. Now, this is something that a lot of black celebrities know. These four women right here, Beyonce does not talk about her relationship with Jay-Z. Savannah James does not talk about her relationship with her husband. They have gone after that relationship. Black people have gone after that relationship. Oh, he cheats on her. He cheats on her. He really wants a white woman. Well, hell, these men can marry white women if they wanted to. And then Kerry Washington, she said in an interview that she had learned very early not to talk about her personal life. If anybody asks her anything, about her personal life, she's going to say, I don't talk about my personal life. And she doesn't. Aisha Curry, who was brought up in Canada and moved to the United States, I think she thought that she could express herself. But she learned very quickly, you better not say nothing. You better not say nothing. The least thing she says, they jump all over her. So she has learned, keep your mouth shut. The takeaway is famous black people are smart not to talk about their personal lives. When people want to interview you, and I'm saying this based on what I have heard mostly white people say, if somebody wants to interview you, you need to know what they want to talk about. You need to set the parameters. 
They really need to give you a list of questions that they want to ask you. And when they overstep, you either tell them, I don't talk about this or end that interview. Because it's not going to go well if they're just going to be popping stuff off their head, speaking off the cuff. You know, they ain't that smart. And they don't know enough to talk about for you to risk them delving into your personal life. Now y'all see I'm very passionate about this and the reason is because I have seen this happen over and over and over again with young black couples. They don't do that when they're marrying these white women, especially these white women. They don't do that. Black men don't do that to other black men when they're with a white woman because in many of their minds he's got a prize. So they think that's something to gloat about. And, and, and really, and what's, so, what's so amusing to me about that is that these white women that they get are really not even that hard to get. You know, because basically all they're getting is a fry cook at the Waffle House. So they're not really getting Bill Gates' daughter. Because remember when they were going all on and on and on about Bill Gates' daughter dating this black guy. And they were talking about, oh, how he's going to get the bag, he's going to get the bag. Next thing we knew, that girl was with a white guy. Because what did that take? What did it take? Her dad basically pulled her aside and said, if you want this $25 billion I got set aside for you, you better rethink who you're dating and who you're being seen with. That's all it took. In black America, for the most part, we are still in a learning curve. We still don't understand how the rest of the world works. We have not learned to value each other or to value family. We have not learned to grant grace to each other. And I'm going to guess because I don't know, but I believe that in any other culture, when two people, successful people, get married, like Simone Biles and Jonathan Owens, those young people will be applauded. This speaks to the stability of family, the continuity of family, and the procreation of a family, which is what keeps your race going. And I've had, I had black women coming on my channel, somebody who's in their 20s, who's never been married, trying to advise me about what a marriage should be. Just because somebody in your family had a right marriage does not mean everybody who gets married is going to have a right marriage. It takes two people to get married, to make a marriage, and it takes two people to ruin a marriage. So it's not about, oh, my, my cousin or my grandma married somebody and he was rotten. Well, hell, your grandma might have been rotten too. And so I'm going to end with this and I'm going to address the women who are coming in the comment section saying that older black women are encouraging younger black women to be in a struggle love relationship. Let me tell you something. I have never been in a struggle love relationship. I was brought up with a father who took care of his family. And in my dating life, I have had three black men that loved me and I married one of them. That was the best decision I ever made. I would not advise any woman to go into a relationship where she's going to suffer. If you don't like men, you don't need to get married to a man. If you don't like women, you don't need to get married to a woman. And what you need to do is leave the people alone who do like women and who do like men and stop putting bad mouth on their relationships. So anyway, y'all, thank you for listening. Let me know what you think about the video. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Share the video. And as always... Have a great day.